Hi everybody, Karen Bentley here with the Sugar-Free Advantage channel, your resource for healthy weight loss and healthy living on a sugar-free, low-carb or keto eating strategy. We give you the tips and tools and resources you need to be successful. And today, one of the tips is about this product, Splenda, that's the brand name. Sucralose is the generic name. What is it? Is it safe? And if it is, how much of it should you have? So we're gonna be talking about Splenda. Um, and it is the most popular artificial sweetener in the world, globally, 62% of the market share, which is pretty remarkable since it only came into our food supply a little over 20 years ago. That's amazing, amazing market share. And why does, why does Splenda or sucralose have such popularity? Well, for one thing, it looks like sugar, it tastes like sugar, it measures like sugar. You can cook with it, more about that in a second. Um, it has no nutritional value. It's available in just about every grocery store and it's affordable and it's easy to use. So there's a lot of reasons why people like sucralose or Splenda. Um, in my opinion, this is the least objectionable artificial sweetener. And uh, it's not without objection, and we'll talk about that too, the objections, but it's the least objectionable. It has the lowest noise level compared to saccharin and aspartame, its two biggest competitors. So I personally use sucralose, Splenda, and I personally like it. I don't use a lot of it, but I am a user and I've been a user for many years and I'm not dead yet and I'm not sick either. Um, so the thing with sucralose is that you can cook with it, but only up to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, the sweetness starts to break, at, break down. The product starts to be unreliable. So you can't use it with very high heats. And also, um, it doesn't caramelize or it doesn't crystallize the way uh, sugar does. It doesn't brown. And that's why there are alternative Splenda products. So let me show you these two. We have the sugar blend of Splenda and we have the brown sugar blend of Splenda. And these two products are needed to do that um, browning and cooking at high heat and all the things that you can't do with the regular version of Splenda. And when you're shopping for them, if you're looking for the one that has no calories, be sure to buy the zero calorie sweetener. That's the one you want. It's really confusing because they look pretty similar. And this one, you have to look and it says sugar blend. This product is made with sugar, that's what there's the most of, and sucralose, that's what there's the least of. And this product is made, the no calorie one is made with maltodextrin, and we'll talk about that in a sec, and sucralose, so maltodextrin is what there's the most of in this product. So they're two wildly different products and they're needed because of cooking variations. Um, let's do a taste test and see what it tastes like. It's supposed to taste just like sugar. This is what it looks like. It looks, can you see? It looks mostly like sugar, but it's a little more powdery, less granular than sugar. Um, I'm gonna taste it. Pretty much tastes just like sugar. The thing I like it better, about it better than uh, saccharin or aspartame is that there's no bitter aftertaste. There's no aftertaste whatsoever. It actually tastes just like sugar and it's pretty yummy. So I think it tastes fine. It passed the taste test. I would recommend that just based on taste. Um, sucralose was discovered in 1976 in Queen Elizabeth College in London, which is now part of King's College. And amazingly, it's the story of another scientist who tasted his uh, concoction and discovered it was sweet. Um, it, it was the same story with saccharin and aspartame where the scientists all tasted their uh, creations. I just am blown away by that. 
Um, and what it is, it's a chlorinated sugar compound. It's made from table sugar. Isn't that amazing? The scientific name for table sugar is sucrose, and this is sucralose. So it's related to sucrose. And um, what they do is they take, for every sucrose molecule, they take three hydrogen oxygen groups and they replace them with chlorine atoms. And then three additional chemical processes are used to create this substance. And I'm not gonna go into it because I'm not a scientist and I doubt you are either, but that's how it happens. And um, it's thought to be, uh, uh, different measurements used 600 to 1,000 times sweeter than sugar. It's three times sweeter than aspartame. So consequently, only a very small amount is needed to be a sweetening agent. I call it a minuscule amount. I don't know what the proportion is here in terms of percentages of maltodextrin to, to sucralose, but I'm guessing it's less than 95%. That's my most educated guess, less than 95%, because uh, sucralose is so sweet. Um, maltodextrin is needed as a filler or a bulking agent to make it look like sugar and to make it measure like sugar. And that's what you mostly see when you're opening a package of sucralose. Um, I've done a whole video on maltodextrin, check below. It's in the description box and you can find out what it is and how it's made. It's thought to be harmless. Um, it does have a, a few calories, very few calories. It's so few that the FDA says you can say it's zero calories, which is what it says on this package, the zero calorie sweetener, but technically there are a few calories per serving and they're in the maltodextrin. Um, so I have a question for you. Since sucralose comes from sugar, is it natural? Is it a natural food? Can we say it's natural? And the answer to that is no, because the, the chemical processes that are done on the sugar molecules so radically alter them that they're no longer um, the same as the molecules that exist in nature. No molecule like it exists in nature. So it is not natural. It is an artificial sweetener. Um, but back to the sucralose a little bit more. Only uh, it's been estimated that anywhere from 11 to 20% is actually absorbed into your body. The rest is excreted in your poop. It doesn't get into your system. And of the small percentage that's absorbed into your body, um, only 20 to 30% is actually metabolized. Um, sucralose is not inert. That means it, it uh, is an active substance. It might have an impact on your system. And one of the impacts it might have is that it uh, might uh, contribute to insulin insensitivity if you're eating a lot of it. And especially if you're eating a lot of it, the maltodextrin in the sucralose uh, might spike your, your, your insulin levels, but you would have to eat a lot of it to get that kind of reaction. Um, and also some uh, scientists claim that because there's no nutritional value in sucralose or in other sweetening agents, that it doesn't actually satisfy. And that's really uh, up for grabs. I don't actually agree with that, but that's what some scientists say. So it's been approved by many governing bodies. I'm just gonna rattle them off for you so you can know. In 1991, Canada was the first to approve. 1993, Australia the second. 1996, New Zealand the third. 1998, the US got on board. 2004, the EU got on board. And in 2008, 80 other countries got on board, including Mexico, Brazil, China, India, and Japan. Um, as I said before, there's a relatively low noise level about sucralose, which is uh, pretty amazing considering how many people in the world use it every day. How many people use it? I don't know, half a, half a billion, maybe more. Um, 
But you should be aware that there was a study funded by the Sugar Association, which has funded other dastardly studies. But this one was funded by the Sugar Association and done by Duke University that found reduced fecal microflora. Again, I'm not a scientist, but uh, some scientists think that's bad increases the pH levels in intestines, and worst of all, increases body weight. However, this has been uh, refuted as not being scientifically rigorous by Harvard, Rutgers, New York Medical College, and Columbia. So for what it's worth, I know that's out there and many people believe it, but it has supposedly been refuted. Um, bottom line, if Splenda or sucralose, any generic product that you use uh, made with sucralose doesn't bother you personally, doesn't bother your gastrointestinal tract, doesn't cause allergies, uh, and it probably won't do those things because uh, it, there's so little sucralose in it, it, it might be more likely that it's the maltodextrin that's causing you problems. But um, if it's not causing you problems, then, you know, Eat it in moderation. And what does moderation mean? That to me is no more than two tablespoons per day of sucralose or in fact, any sweetening agent. If you keep it at two tablespoons per day or less, you're gonna be below the danger radar and you can enjoy it, with, you can enjoy it without worrying about it. Um, that is a recommendation for everybody except pregnant women or uh, mothers who are nursing babies, uh, you shouldn't be using any artificial sweeteners or any sweetening agents that have been highly processed. So um, that's all I've got on Splenda for you. If you like this content, please smash that like button. And if you really liked it, please come back and visit us some more. Consider subscribing. We would love for you to be a part of the Sugar-Free Advantage channel. Bye for now.